But Oklahoma has over 200 lakes, a fair amount of rivers, and some hiking trails that aren't really that bad. It is a little flat and they don't have as many wooded areas, let's say you'd find in Oregon or Washington or West Virginia, but it's still decent. They're strong points. But uh, see, this is not the first time I see people commenting on this that saying it's very flat. Wait, but, but uh, is that a bad thing, being very flat? I mean, <laughs> I assume there is some mountains, you know, uh, but I, I never understood this argument that well. Why everyone is moving to Oklahoma? My friends, this is a great question. Honestly, I always thought Oklahoma is one of the most beautiful states in America. But uh, before I go into that, uh, let me ask you for one thing. If you can leave a like... Uh, Thank you so much. It's the best way to show support. Uh, now, if you can subscribe, <laughs> well, in that case, uh, forget about it. Uh, you make my day. F that in consideration. Uh, a link for the original video my description and the uh, last point. Why is there so much hype around moving to Oklahoma these days? That is what we're looking at today in this video. Oklahoma is growing. In my opinion, there's no real reason it should be, but they are. To be fair, there are a few good reasons, but not enough for me to want to move to the land of the red man. And if that red sounded man. like a racist statement, it's not. That's actually the nickname of the state. To me, Oklahoma- Wait, but why is that? The red man? Maybe because it's too hot and you get burnt or something? And you become red or <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I don't know, but that's interesting. It's a statement. It's not. That's actually the nickname of the state. To me, Oklahoma is a place people move to when they've been priced out of Texas. Other than the late 1800s, Oklahoma's never really had a high rate of growth. A lot of that has to do with they didn't have any really big industries past energy and agriculture. But in recent years, they've started to see a change. Cities like Tulsa and Oklahoma City have seen tech startups multiply and flourish, drawing Amazing. in more people to work for these tech companies, and more importantly, getting longtime residents to stay here and work. Other than the 1980 census, one of Oklahoma's biggest problems with growth has been their born and breds leaving for states like California, Texas, and Oregon after they graduate college and it looks like okay so oklahoma traditional is a place that the people that are born there tend to explore other states okay i was not aware of this eh? so uh, this is not the first time i react to oklahoma i have videos reacting to to oklahoma and how beautiful it is and it's quite impressive i mean i but of course i don't know in terms of business in terms of opportunities i I have no idea what is going on there, but in terms of natural beauty, it's incredible. Leaving for states like California, Texas, and Oregon after they graduate college. And it looks like that's sort of changing. So today we're looking at the reasons why people are now moving or staying in Oklahoma, according to a survey I ran in April and May of 2023. Got okay. it? Get it? Good. Good. Let's take a look. Number 10, great for business. Yes, there's a lot of hype going around these days about what are the best states for businesses. Oklahoma is always in the top 10 when people discuss the most business friendly atmosphere. Really? Studies top vary, 10. you know, whatever criteria they're using, but Oklahoma usually shows up in the top 10. The state offers various economic incentives for businesses, which could be a strong oh, tool amazing. for entrepreneurs looking to start or relocate their business. It's also centrally located. This isn't as big a deal as it used to be with all the video chats and all that, but a lot of- Sorry, but uh, uh, Oklahoma is, is central located, but is not uh, Midwest, right? It is not Midwest. Businesses still have people that have to- But it's also not the South, right? So what is Oklahoma? <laughs> travel across the country for meetings or whatever. I never thought this was a big deal until I talked to this woman who is now a retired corporate travel agent. She said a lot of businesses will try and put their headquarters as close as they can to a major airport or as close as they can get to the middle of the country. This cuts down on flight times. Like I had said though, that's not as big a deal as it used to be, but it still is a factor for a lot of businesses and people following those businesses to wherever they relocate to. Of course. Number nine, educational institutions. Oklahoma is home to two of the finest universities we have to offer in this country, the wow. University of Oklahoma and Oklahoma State University. They have a few others that are pretty good, but these are the two big ones. Obviously, when you have good sized universities, it's gonna draw in a lot of people. 
students and academics. If the states or cities these universities are in, they suck, people are gonna choose to go someplace else. Now here's where a lot of the hype comes from. There's been different studies of how often and what's the percentage of students that stay behind after graduation, like they decide to call whatever city they were in for school home. Now the study's a couple years old, but I'm sure it hasn't changed much. It was actually done in 2018, right before the pandemic. Both the University of Oklahoma and Oklahoma State University are in the top 20 of the 100 major universities for the highest percentage of students. The university- Ooh, that's really, really impressive again. Of Oklahoma was number eight and Oklahoma State University was number 17. And just so you know, San Diego State in California was number one. Number eight, urban and rural balance. There are four types of people these days when you're talking about human settlement, I guess you could say. You got city people that need to live in the city. You got rural people that need to live in rural areas. You got people that love the suburbs. You also got hermits. Some people call them preppers. They live out in the woods and pretend that the world's coming to an end soon. Or at least the collapse of the governments or whatever. I don't know how- So my friends, are you guys more city people or rural? Oh my God, that's a difficult word. Whoa, that's a difficult word. Rural. Oh my, let's run it back. Sorry. Rural. R rural. And that the world's coming to an end. Sorry. Number eight, urban and rural balance. Rural balance. Okay. There are four types of people these days when you're talking about human settlement, I guess you could say. You got city people that need to live in the city. You got rural people that need to live in rural areas. You got people that love the suburbs. You also got hermits. Some people call them preppers. They live out in the woods and pretend that the world's coming to an end soon. Or I think living in a city is not my thing, to, to be honest, even though I live in a city, which is kind of crazy for me to say that. But it's basically because it is what it is, you know. My life ended up putting me in this place. But um, I think I would love to live uh, in the suburbs, you know. I, I think I would love to live in the suburbs or, or maybe even rural. Man, that word. Or at least the collapse of the governments or whatever. I don't know how Oklahoma is when it comes to those hermits and those prepper people, but they are big in rural communities. They have a lot of really nice ones. I think where they're the strongest and a lot of people are being drawn to now are the small towns in the rural areas. They have right. a good mix close enough to the city, but far enough away where you don't have to deal with the problems that come with a big city. Now there's that's perfect. He's, that's perfection. It's basically you are outside of the city in a very green uh, uh, zone. But if you pick your car, you are like 10 minutes uh, away of the city. You know, I love that. Two biggest cities are Oklahoma City and Tulsa. Both have their problems, and there's a strong argument that they both suck, and there's also an argument that they're pretty good. If you look- Come on, look at that. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm sorry to me, this looks incredible. Look at both of them and compare them to the big cities of the United States. They're really not doing that bad. They're kind of middle of the road. Now, me saying that will lead to something in the comments section. People are going to say, well, they're not reporting all their crime, or they're not reporting all their poverty. That's the new go-to line for people that just want to dispute dispute things just to dispute them. They want to make it sound like you can't believe the stats. You just got to trust them because their opinion is all that matters. <laughs> Oklahoma <laughs> cities aren't that bad and their rural and small towns are pretty decent. And that mix makes it very popular these days. And a lot <laughs> of people are headed there because of that. Number seven. Number seven, climate and nature. For those of you who enjoy varied climate with distinct... Wait, wait, wait. Climate is one thing, but what about the weather? My friends, I love Oklahoma, as you guys know, but isn't Oklahoma one of the places that have the most tornadoes? Mm, this, is, <laughs> this is a problem for me. <laughs> seasons, Oklahoma offers hot, sunny summers and mild winters, although That's winter true. can be unpredictable at times, so keep that in mind. It's mm. the middle of the country, some weird stuff happens when it comes to weather patterns. But on average, that's what you're going to get. Hot, sunny summers, mild winters. Now, why okay. is this a big deal? Well, there's a lot of people that are tired of shoveling snow. When they can afford it, they move to places like South Carolina, Florida, something like that. Maybe even Arizona or New Mexico. Oklahoma is becoming more and more of an option for people like that for a few different reasons that we'll get into later on this list. And most of the time, it has to do with money. Oklahoma's never had a really big reputation for outdoor stuff to do, like let's say Oregon, Colorado, Minnesota, Montana, Wyoming, Idaho. You know, it just, it's not like those. Everyone knows that's where you go to for the outdoor 
outdoors. And before anyone says it, yes, West Virginia, North Carolina, they all got great stuff also. But Oklahoma has over 200 lakes, a fair amount of rivers, and some hiking trails that aren't really that bad. It is a little flat and they don't have as many wooded areas, let's say you'd find in Oregon or Washington or West Virginia, but it's still decent. They're strong. Wait, but the... <laughs> See, this is not the first time I see people commenting on this that saying it's very flat. Wait, they, but uh, is that a bad thing, being very flat? I mean, <laughs> I assume there is some mountains, you know, uh, but I, I never understood this argument that well. Point though is with the boating, the fishing, they have all you'll need in Oklahoma. Now the downside of this one, of course, is bad weather, which normally comes in the form of a couple dozen tornadoes every year. If you've ever seen a tornado, you ever been in a tornado, they're pretty freaking scary. I've told this story before, but I saw one way off in the distance one time, and yeah, I was like, let's turn around, we're going the other direction. And the idiots I was with were all, no, let's get closer, check it out. I'm like, I'm driving, we're turning around. I've always had this rule in life that I don't get near any thing that can pick up my car and toss it into another county like a beanbag in a cornhole competition. Number six, job opportunities. With its booming energy sector, particularly oil and natural gas, Oklahoma offers numerous employment opportunities. The state also has growing industries in aerospace, biotechnology, and healthcare. That wasn't a thing. This state was heavy in oil and natural gas forever. Agriculture too, but most of it was oil, natural gas, and you know, growing stuff. Because of money over the last decade or so, a lot of other companies are finding their way to cities like Oklahoma and Tulsa. This has led to Oklahoma. Honestly, Oklahoma is doing very well. Oklahoma having one of the lowest unemployment rates in the country year See? over year. So whatever it is, they're usually about 10 or 20% lower than the national average, which if you don't know, jobs draw people into any place and lack of jobs are the number one reason people leave a place. Number five, friendly communities. Oklahoma is sort of known for its of friendly, welcoming <laughs> atmosphere. Oklahoma is considered a southern state, but it's right there next to the Midwest, and the Midwest is kind of known for. Oh, I was kind of correct. It's close to the Midwest. It's a bit of a mix, maybe. Being good neighbors. It's like they all watched Mr. Rogers and really took in the message. Mr. Rogers. Oh, I, I get the reference because I watched a couple of Mr. Rogers videos. Number four, the military bases. Yes, believe it or not, military oh. bases do draw in a lot of people. This is how really? it plays out normally. Military guy marries girl ends up staying there because she's a local. Or you're retired military and you want to live near the base. If you're retired military or disabled veteran, there are certain things you could do on base, like buy your groceries, go see the doctor, things like that. So a lot of veterans will stay near. Oh, really? So if you are a veteran, you can, uh, the government will assist you with health care. Uh, I mean, that makes a lot of sense, by the way, but that, that, I, I was not aware of this. Here, good sized military bases in retirement. And Oklahoma has its fair share of military bases. They have Altus Air Force Base, which trains pilots and maintenance technicians, things like that. That's in Altus, Oklahoma. You have Tinker Air Force Base. That's in Oklahoma City. You have Vance Air Force Base in Eden, Oklahoma. Then, of course, you have Fort Sill Army Base in Lawton, Oklahoma. And, of Holy. course, you have McAllister Army Ammunitions in McAllister, Oklahoma, or MACAP, as the old timers used to call it. I'm sure they still do. It's been years since I've been there. But Oklahoma does have a pretty good sized military presence. And besides the people that live there for the military, like I said, a lot of retirees will be hovering around the bases, collecting that government check and doing a lot of fishing. Number three, taxes. Oklahoma is known as a tax friendly state. They typically really? rank among the states with the lowest tax burdens, always in the top 10. Different studies look at it differently, but you'll always find them in the top 10. Taxfoundation.org has them at number 10. Very basic and broad brush look at this. 9% of your income in Oklahoma will go to taxes. Now, 9% sounds pretty high, but you have to remember there are states out there like New York where it's 16%. Connecticut's 15.4%. Wait, I have to understand this part a bit better. This tax thing in America is a bit confusing. Very basic and broad brush look at this. 9% of your income in Oklahoma will go to taxes. Now, 9%? That's nothing. Sorry. Broad brush, look at this. 9% of your... 
I am I understanding this correct? Let's put. Oh yeah, it's nine percent. This is Portuguese. Okay, sorry. Your income in Oklahoma will go to taxes. Now, 9% sounds pretty high, but you have to remember there's states out there like New York where it's 16%, Connecticut's 15.4%, Nebraska's 12%, Virginia's 13%, and everyone will ask, no matter what, even though it has nothing to do with this state, California is 12.6%. So in the grand scheme of things, 9% isn't that bad. And before you say it, stop typing. Alaska's number one with 4.6%. So being ranked 10th out of 50 states is not that bad. Oklahoma has one of the lowest median property tax rates in the nation, which if you're thinking about buying a house in Oklahoma, actually a lot of people are these days, this is one of the reasons. Okay. Number two, home prices. Might as well jump into the home prices because honestly, that is one of the main reasons people move there. In the survey we did where we asked people, what are the reasons you want to move to Oklahoma? 65% of the responses had number one and two that are on this list. Home prices being one of them. The median home cost in Oklahoma is significantly lower than the national average. And that's according to Zillow. The typical home value for homes in Oklahoma is less than half the national average. What's the national average for home values in the United States? In the second quarter of 2023, it was 416,000. Damn, that's a lot of money. Okay. $100. In but to be honest, uh, housing uh, is a huge problem in Europe. The prices are also really crazy. Here. State of Oklahoma, the average home value is $199,221. Now, Okay, wow, that's so interesting, my friends. He's basically half right. The eh? uh, average home value is $199,221. Now, that's the whole state. Let's take a look at some of the cities they have. Oklahoma City, it's $197,000. Tulsa, it's $193,000. You compare it to other big cities in this part of the country. Kansas City is $227,985. Okay, so and Dallas is $306,000. That alone is drawing people into Oklahoma. While we're on the subject of real estate, if you're thinking about moving to Oklahoma, there's a link for a website called Home and Money that will get you in touch with a real estate agent anywhere you want to move. I have a relative that just started talking to a realtor about moving to Oklahoma. And yes, they're moving from California. It has nothing to do with politics. It just has to do with price. They want to go from extremely expensive real estate to extremely inexpensive real estate. All right, before we get to number one, don't forget we have another channel called On This Day. There's a link for that down below. We would love it if you went over and subscribed. All right, on to number one. And number one, an extremely low cost of living. Yes, they it's have amazing. an extremely low cost of living in Oklahoma. It's not just the real estate. It's not just the taxes. Even it's though everything. they can be all lumped in together, the typical cost of living when you're looking at things like goods and services in Oklahoma, they're ranked eighth lowest in the nation. For wow. utilities, they're ranked the fifth lowest in the nation. Okay, I have to pause it, my friend. So I started the video uh, with a question, why everyone is moving to Oklahoma? I mean, now I understand Oklahoma is an amazing, amazing place to start to, to start your life, you know. Actually, I have a question for all of you guys watching. Anyone from Oklahoma? If so, leave me a comment, my friend. That would make uh, my day. Even if you have family in Oklahoma, free to, to leave me a comment. <laughs> I guess when you live in a state where the lifeblood is oil, uh, you get some breaks when it comes to your utilities. Oh, standing. All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got Friends, thank you so much for watching this with me. Uh, show him all the support, the, the world according to Bricks. But yeah, this was amazing. See you guys in the next one. Bye, my friends.